the diseases that I've dealt with, which the worst case scenario actually came out. They always overshoot. So when you use numbers like a million, a million and a half, two million, that almost certainly is off the chart. Now it's not impossible, but very, very unlikely. So it's difficult to present. I mean, looking at what we're seeing now, you know, I would say between 100 and 200,000 cases, but I don't want to be held to that because it, it's, it's, excuse me, deaths. I mean, we're, we're going to have millions of cases, but I, I just don't. My forecast as of the 22nd of March 2020 is for the U.S. to trend towards 531,000 tested as infected by the end of April, coupled with 26,550 deaths for a case fatality rate of 5% as it was hoped that valuable time would not be squandered on political bickering during the escalating national emergency where every day literally does count. This video is part of a series of in-depth analysis, the whole of which has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. So last week's data as of the 29th of March continued to show a ballistic trend with infections rising to 133,000 against the trend trajectory of 94,000 that imply to expect 750,000 testing positive by the end of April whilst the number of deaths was also running well ahead of forecast at 2,363 for a case fatality rate of 1.8% versus 1,646 forecast. That implied to expect 38,000 deaths by the end of April. The latest data as of the 5th of April has US infections continuing on a ballistic trajectory, now standing at 336,673 more than 10 times the number of just two weeks ago, well beyond my forecast trend trajectory at 224,000. Where if this deviation persists, then that would imply 800,000 testing positive by the end of April, whilst the number of deaths is also running ahead of my forecast at 9,696 versus 7,097. That now implies to expect 36,000 deaths by the end of April which is actually down from 38,000 of last week. So some good news is finally starting to merge as the exponential curves for both infections and deaths is starting to moderate, which means the numbers should con converge towards my forecasts of 531,000 and 26,559 by the end of April. Meanwhile, the case fatality rate continues to rise up from 2% last week to 2.9% this week, tracking a trend towards at least 5% by the end of April. So overall it might not sound like it, but there is finally some good news as the parabolic curves are starting to moderate. Yes, there will be a lot more deaths to come, probably triple today's number by the end of April, which is due to the lag of 3-5 to five weeks between people becoming infected and showing up in hospitals and then dying. Hopefully this trend will persist over the coming week as other states take note of New York's experience and have acted to prevent the same taking place in their states. Whilst all of the top 5 hotspots continue to resolve to a CFR of more than 3% regardless of the numbers testing positive. Most notable of which is Louisiana where the likes of New Orleans basically ignored the warnings out of Europe and New York and went ahead with their street parties that allowed infected to spew viral particles across huge crowds, hence resulting in the current surge in cases and deaths, which also illustrates that unlike the flu, hot weather is not going to offer much respite. So why are the deaths increasing if there are more testing? For if the logic of the flu earthers was correct, then the percentage of deaths was high because people were not being tested in enough numbers that surely now that the US is testing on a mass scale then the percentage dying will be decreasing and not increasing. The percentage dying are increasing because number one, the time lag between infected and dying is about four to five weeks. 
Thus, those dying today were infected about four to five weeks ago when the number of attested as infected was around one thirtieth today's number. How can that be? Well, it's because this is not the flu. It's far worse, thus the CFR is and will be far higher than that of the flu, probably at least 30 times as deadly as the flu. Secondly, US hospitals, starting in New York, are becoming overloaded, which means there is diminishing capacity to treat new patients with interventions such as ventilators, which is why the percentage dying will continue to increase to at least 5% by the end of April and higher still during May. Thirdly, most of those on ventilators will die. Maybe as high as 85%, as is the experience of Italy, and those will be added to the death toll even as the number of newly infected falls. Hence the death rates will keep climbing and thus like Italy the US looks set to be heading towards a CFR of well above 5%, maybe peaking at 10% during May, which will be regardless of how many people are testing positive as the number dying will just keep increasing. Meanwhile the mainstream media is focused on graphs showing that the US now has more infections and deaths than China. However knowing that the Chinese data is fake. I doubt that to be true, so understand this, whatever happens to the number of US deaths, i.e. 50,000, 100, even maybe 200,000, the actual number of Chinese deaths will have been far higher. It's just that the totalitarian state that unleashed the plague on the planet is very good at hiding the bodies. For instance, I don't buy the story that the Wuhan plague was just limited to Huwei province. Meanwhile, apparently panic buying appears to have returned to China, which suggests that the Wuhan plague has not been contained. Anyway, when the coronavirus dust settles, there will be a reckoning with China, which I'm sure even dovish US politicians will be most eager to pursue, given the war with China megatrend. And again, the whole of this extensive analysis was first made available to patrons who support my work. So, for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. And ensure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel for the next video in this series, though it's not guaranteed that all of the analysis will be converted into videos. That's another reason to become a patron.